Sometimes on a clear day, you could just see the faintest outline of these random islands just 30 miles off the coast of San Francisco. And no one really knows what goes on there because it's not open to the public. I first heard of the Farallon Islands while working a research project in Chile. A previous volunteer described its wonders to me and I was hooked immediately. I've wanted to start creating these documentaries and mini-series of my projects to help inform, educate, and motivate other individuals like myself who have biology degrees or simply have an interest in this field. And that's where the Farallon Islands is pretty important and Point Blue has done something pretty special because you don't get organizations that simply operate in the conservation and preservation of entire ecosystems. Point Blue is a, a non-profit, science-based conservation organization whose mission is to study and protect birds and other wildlife populations through science, education, and outreach. You know, we have between 20 and 25 interns and graduate students per year on the island. So through the decades, we have been in a huge training ground. And that opportunity doesn't exist in the same capacity in lots of other programs. Training the next generation is actually a very high and important point and goal for the organization, meaning that we are trying to bring the next generation to the island provide them the skill sets to become climate smart conservationists and then go out into the world and spread those skills so that more people are aware of what's going on. I just really appreciate the opportunity to be here. I think it's great that Point Blue uses volunteers to maintain the island and maintain a data set, you know, a very long running data set. Talking to some of the researchers and employees at the head office who are figuring out how to translate that data to make sure that the public has a good understanding of exactly what's going on. It's incredible to think that there's always been someone out on the Farallons for the past 50 years, conducting research, monitoring the animals' behaviors, and making sure that the ecosystem stays stable. There used to be 150,000 fur seals on the island, thousands and thousands of elephant seals. When the Russian, British, and American sealers came, they wiped out all of them. So part of the research has been documenting the recolonization of these individuals. All of the individuals that are alive now today are supposedly said to have come from 20 to 100 individuals that survived this extinction from mankind hunting them down. This season in particular, I've learned an incredible amount about elephant seals that I just didn't have any exposure to in my schooling. So the idea with the elephant seals is to see what their yearly productivity is. How many animals come to use the island and how many of them give birth. And also it's useful to see how many of them return to the island in subsequent years. We can use that year to year to look at which harems are more successful over time and which ones are less successful over time. The interns are the real boots on the ground on the Fairlands. They are the people who are collecting most of our data. They're doing a lot of observational data. They're doing hands-on work, actually capturing, tagging, and marking individual animals. We look at how these animals survive, how they reproduce, what they eat, how that changes through time, and what that can tell us about changes that are happening in the ocean. Over the last few years, we've recorded some of the highest sea surface temperatures that have ever been in our, our long-term data sets, and the, the highest air temperatures recorded on the island. With climate change going on, understanding how things are changing is going to be the only way we have a chance to try and mitigate the effects. So maintaining these places and maintaining them with experienced staff is going to be critically important going forward. Our sand is eroded away from the island, so we believe that the increase in frequency and intensity of these large storm events has created a system on the island where in the past, you used to have this nice sandy incline and access point to the island where a cow could haul out. She could find a nice soft spot in the sand flat to pup and keep herself cool by digging underneath the sand and flipping sand on her back. That doesn't exist anymore. So these storm events have eroded the sandy habitat away. 
and the cows that come here to breed now, they can't cool themselves off. There's no easy access to the water. It's hard to get on the island to even pup. And I think a combination of the increase in air temperatures and water temperatures and not being able to thermoregulate well has degraded this habitat. It's just as important to document a breeding colony growing as it is to document one that's in decline. And I think that it's really important to continue to monitor this because I think it's a very good indicator of climactic shift. You know it's a good day when you can see the Fairlawns from San Francisco. 